What's going on everybody? Josh Engelman for awesomemode.com and I am back with my week nine top five. My top five at every position, except for defense because it's defense. Top five tight ends, top five wide receivers, running backs and quarterbacks. My top five as it stands right now as we head into week nine. Before we get started, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything we do goes live. Why would you want, not want to know when the content comes out? There's so much of it. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to The Sims over the weekend. I'm going to have updates as we get more news, probably drop an update sometime Saturday night, drop one last update Sunday morning before I get started on our early morning strategy show and our live before lock show. So if you want to see that, follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. And finally, let me know in the comments section, who are your top options at quarterback, running back, wideout, and tight end? Now, I wanna give a little bit of an explanation as to what I'm doing here. I take my projections and I simulate the simulate, that's a really weird way to say that. I simulate the slate over and over and over again, trying to get an idea of how people perform. The percentages you see on the left-hand side of the screen or you know, somewhere on the right-hand side of the screen next to everybody's name, that lets you know how often that person will be in the optimal lineup. So what we're looking at right now, Mark Andrews is on the screen. He is number six at tight end. He shows up in the optimal lineup 7.6% of the time. Now I know that number seems low, but, but there's a lot of variance in football. These numbers are usually pretty spread out, but for right now, that's how often Mark Andrews does it based on my projections. We're about to go through everybody. I'm excited to take a look at it. I've got a couple guys that I have my eye on already. I'm excited. Let's start it off right now. Top five tight ends. Before we sneak into that top five, we're going to take a look at the bottom of the top 10 for tight ends. That was really difficult to say, but you guys get it. Jimmy Graham, number 10. Mike Gesicki, number nine. TJ Hawkinson, number eight. Johnny Smith, seven. And as you guys can see, coming in, number six, Mark Andrews. He is on the outside looking in. Top five starts now. And at number five, we've got Noah Font, $4,600, projected for 12.5 fantasy points, gets a date with the Falcons. Now, the Broncos are five, four-point underdogs, 50-point total. What you're looking for here is the fact that the Falcons have the 29th ranked defense. That looks great. You're not going to get a lot of highs out of Noah Font, but that's not really what you're looking for at 4,600. He's in the optimal lineup 10% of the time. He goes north of 30 fantasy points. 2% of the time. There, there is a world out there where things get crazy, but for right now, no font just feels like a nice, normal, everyday tight end option. Now, number four, we've got Hayden Hurst. A little bit better of an option if you're trying to save some salary. Same exact game. Now, the Falcons are four-point favorites. Again, we still have that 50-point total against the, uh, I almost called them the Nuggets, against the Broncos. Hurst just gets there a little bit more frequently because the Falcons look a little bit better. Denver's defense actually, against the pass, has been better than the Falcons this season. I'm not going to overreact too much to simple defensive stats, so I'm going to look to Hayden Hurst as my number four tight end. Number three, we're heading to LA, formerly the Los Angeles Raiders, now the Las Vegas Raiders, tight end Darren Waller, 5,800. This is a guy that can put up an actual big performance. Uh, Chargers have been pedestrian on D, 18th against the run, 12th against the pass. I think Waller gets to the optimal lineup just north of 12% of the time, has the ability to go for 30 plus, so you could see a couple touchdowns here. Doesn't bust all that often. Less than 10 fantasy points, 12% of the time. Not ideal, that, that one's going to sting at 5,800, but it's not going to kill you, and it doesn't happen that frequently very steady. Love Darren Waller this week. Now, when I started this, I just assumed Travis Kelsey was going to be number one. Kansas City Chiefs, 10 and a half point favorites against Carolina, 53 point total. But 7,200 is a big time price tag for Kelsey. And there's enough value out there at tight end this week that you don't have to necessarily go straight to Kelsey. Now, Kelsey is on a very different level than the rest of the tight ends that are listed. Um, he has the opportunity to go real big. And the Panthers defense has not been all that great so far this season. Kelsey can go for 30 plus 11% of the time. Very, very hard for him to bust barring an injury. Um, he is in the optimal lineup 12.6% of the time. Just nudges out Darren Waller. But the most important thing is, who's number one? That would be Hunter Henry. I love him as a salary savings. 
only $4,000. You cannot beat that. Gets the date with the Raiders. I tried it again. I don't know how well it worked. Uh, Chargers, one-point favorite, 52-point overall total. Raiders defense has been dreadful this year. 31st against the run, 27th against the pass. You're not going to get monstrous performances out of Hunter Henry, but he's not going to kill you either. I like getting there. 13.4% of the time, Hunter Henry is in the optimal lineup at tight end, and that is almost solely because of his price. He's just simply too cheap for what you get. He will help you pay up for the true studs at running back and wide receiver this week. Now we're off to the top 10 wide receivers. Coming in at 10, Adam Thielen. Number 9, Devontae Parker. Number 8, Justin Jefferson. Number 7, Stephon Diggs. Two Vikings and a former Viking. Number 6, DeAndre Hopkins. He is on the outside looking in, 8,200. I'm more interested in the top 5 though, but... Certainly the bottom of that top 10 looks, list looks pretty, pretty good. Now coming in, number five, we've got Robbie Anderson, $6,300, gets the date with Kansas City. We know or we assume that Carolina is going to be passing a ton, 10 and a half point underdogs, 53 point total. Chiefs pass defense has been pretty good this season, but that's not going to stop me. This is a volume play. I think Robbie Anderson can go north of 30 fantasy points almost 14% of the time. He's in the optimal 12% of the time. It's just so much opportunity with the Panthers playing from behind. I like Robbie Anderson as the bring back in a Kansas City stack. I just like him in general, regardless of your lineup construction. I've got my eye on Robbie Anderson. At number four, we're heading to Washington, $6,500. Uh, the football team, I almost said it, has a date with the Giants. Uh, Washington, two and a half point favorites, 42 point game total. Giants D is bad. 28th against the pass. That stands out perfectly for McLaurin. He's been really solid over these past this past year and a half. Goes for 30 fantasy points 15% of the time. In the optimal 14% of the time. Really nice spot for McLaurin. 6500 probably a couple hundred dollars too cheap. And that's why you see him in the top five. This one didn't work out last week, but they seem to just alternate what they're doing. Number three, going to be Tyler Lockett. So I assume it's going to be a DK Metcalf week. 6800 for Lockett. Seattle's got a date with the Bills. They're three-point favorites in Buffalo, 55-point total. Bills defense, not great. Below average against the run, below average against the pass. I think Seattle and Russell Wilson will be able to get it done however they need. I'm a big fan of the Seahawks this particular week, and the defense should open things up. I just hope it's not Metcalf, and I hope it is Lockett. Lockett puts up some big numbers. 19.5% of the time he goes for north of 30 fantasy points. He can really go big this week. I've got my eye on Lockett, but there are two guys that are better than him. At number two, we're going to the Chargers. 7K, Keenan Allen. Got him projected for 20.6 fantasy points. As I mentioned before, when we were talking about Hunter Henry, terrible, terrible Raiders defense. 31st against the rush, 27th against the pass. They're not really stopping anything. 50-point game total looks great. Allen can have monster days. I have very little fear in him as a full bust. Only goes less than 10 fantasy points about 7% of the time. Shows up in the optimal just shy of 20% of the time. You know what you're getting with Keenan Allen. He's steady, he's solid, and he certainly has the opportunity to put up a big day in a spot where the matchup works perfectly. But number one this week, we're going to Julio Jones. 7,200, 21.8 fantasy point projection. Uh, Atlanta's got a date with Denver. Falcons, four-point favorites at home, 50-point game total. Denver's defense is solid. You know, middle of the pack against the run. on In the top 10, or I guess 10th, if you want to say it, uh, against the pass, you can get a big day out of Julio. If Julio has a day where he's getting in the end zone, he can have one of those problematic like 40 plus fantasy point days. He goes for 30 plus 26% of the time, shows up in the optimal 21% of the time. That's a full 2% higher than Keenan Allen. That's five and a half percent more than Tyler Lockett. Julio Jones is on an island, very clearly my top wide receiver this week, and probably the top wide receiver to the entire public. Making our way over to the running backs, number 10, Chase Edmonds, number 9, Clyde Edwards, Elair, number 8, James Conner, number 7, David Montgomery, number 6, DeAndre Swift, 5K, looks pretty solid at that price tag, didn't work out last week for me, but we're going to go back to him again, but what we're worried about, the top 5. 
Number five, we've got Derrick Henry, 7,900. I, I assume he would be a little bit higher, 20 fantasy point projection, but you know, six and a half point favorites, a sub 50 point game total is fine. You expect the game script to work well for Henry. The problem is the Bears are good. Uh, 11th, uh, their defense is 11th against the run, fifth against the pass. So we're talking about a top 10 defense here. Look, you're waiting for Derrick Henry to break one. Uh, he could have a day where he's got 20 carries for 80 yards, and you're like, man, Derrick Henry is a bust. And then all of a sudden, you get the alert on your phone that he just picked up an 80-yard touchdown, and you're like, oh, okay, Derrick Henry is now essential. I think he shows up in the optimal 12.8% of the time. I think there are just better options to pay up for, but clearly, Derrick Henry is going to be a big part of my weekend. But first, I think you could pay down a little bit. 7K, James Robinson, just shy of a 20-point fantasy point projection, gets a date with Houston. I think I've said gets a date a lot. That's got to be really annoying for everybody. We'll, we'll, try to, we'll try to curb that problem moving forward. Jags, 7-point underdogs, 50-point game total. The appealing part here is that the Texans' defense is terrible. 27th against the run, 23rd against the pass. That's just a benefit to Robinson clear across the board. He can really rack up some points in this matchup. 16.5% chance of going for north of 30. Shows up in the optimal 15.7% of the time. You can see the gap between Robinson and Henry. We took a step up in tiers for this week. I love Robinson. Three to go. Now, number three, we've got Josh Jacobs. I understand he's a little dinged up. Missed Thursday's practice. I'm expecting him to play. He's 6,300. He's just too cheap. 18 fantasy point projection. It's a really even matchup against the Chargers. 52-point uh, game total looks lovely. Chargers defense against the run ranks 18th, so it's not anything you're super scared about. He just shows up in the optimal 16% of the time. That's what happens when you get a guy priced right around the average. That $6,300 price tag works in any sort of roster construction. If you're trying to go heavy stars and scrubs, you can still get a guy in the middle for that lineup. If you're trying to be relatively balanced, 6,300 is going to work perfectly. I think Jacobs fits no matter what you're trying to do, and that's why he shows up at number three. Oi, number two, David Johnson, a guy that I roster every week, and it feels like it's never a benefit, but I'm going right back there again because he's 5,600. 16.8 fantasy point projection, he has to head to Jacksonville. Jacksonville's terrible. Houston, seven-point favorites, 50-point game total. Jags defense, 23rd against the run in DVOA. Dead last against the pass, and you know that David Johnson is going to be involved in both sides of the coin. He doesn't have monster days. Only goes north of 30, 9.4% of the time. But he is so efficient with what he does. Uh, the upside is there for receptions. Since he gets a, a couple extra targets, the floor is higher. So he also doesn't totally tank your lineup all that often. Shows up in the optimal 17.5% of the time. What you're looking from David Johnson is filler. I'm expecting a day right around 20 fantasy points. And if you get a little bit of touchdown luck, you're going to need him. Number one this week is last week's hero, Dalvin Cook. Now, I don't expect him to go for 200 and whatever yards and 900 touchdowns like he did last week, but 8,200 is a big, big, big price. He's just worth it. 22.3 fantasy point baseline, highest running back projection I have. Gets a positive game script, slight favorites against the Lions. 52 point game total looks great. Lions defense. 21st in DVOA. All signs point to a monster day out of Cook. If the touchdown luck is there, you're thrilled. Even if it's not, you're assuming you get a couple receptions, you know, 30, 40 yards, 100 yards rushing, and you're happy enough. And guys like Hunter Henry at the tight end spot make it easier for you to get to someone like Dalvin Cook for 8,200. He's a top running back on the slate. He's expensive, but I think he's worth it. And finally, we hit the top 10 quarterbacks. We've got Tua at 10. Kyle Allen at 9, Pat Mahomes at 8, Jake Lutton? Luton? Well, probably, I don't know if that's a long U or a short U or however you're supposed to describe U's, but Jake's showing up 7th. Number 6, Derek Carr, just on the outside looking in. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not super worried about quarterback. It's a pretty flat position for me. I generally let my running backs and my wide receivers and my tight ends dictate my quarterback exposure a little bit more. But if we're talking about playing one lineup or three lineups, 
you do want to focus a little bit on who's throwing the ball. These are the top five guys, in my opinion. Number five, Russell Wilson, 7,600. Seattle gets Buffalo. Slight favorites, which is nice, in Buffalo. Monster line, 55 points. They're bad against the run. They're bad against the pass. Wilson can go for 30 fantasy points or more 29% of the time. This dude feels ultra safe. It feels really difficult for Russell Wilson to have a bad game. I have no problem going here. Clearly a great pairing with Tyler Lockett, also making my top 10. No problem going to both of those guys. Number four, Deshaun Watson, clear pairing with DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, wait, no, he's not on the team anymore. They didn't want their best quarterback to have an incredible pass catcher. Really smart. 7,100 for Watson. Gets the the date. I couldn't help myself. I was already saying it. I got to keep saying it. Seven-point favorites, 50-point total. The worst pass defense in the league by DVOA. That's the Jags. Watson's got the perfect matchup. You can't ask for anything better here. Goes for north of 30 fantasy points 24% of the time. But as you can see, he's only in the optimal in the sim 6% of the time. That's why you don't want to get too hung up on quarterback. But for right now, he's very clearly one of the best options. Number three, we're going to Justin Herbert, 6,800, 23 fantasy point projection, 52 point game total, and the 27th ranked pass defense for the Raiders. 24.5% chance of going north of 30. You can see the step up. 8.6% of the time, Justin Herbert is in the optimal. That's a big gap between him and Watson. There's a tier here. Herbert starts that tier. He's number three, but there are two better options. I guess if I hold two twos up, that's four, but I meant just two. Number two, Kyler Murray, 7,800, 25.3 fantasy point projection taking on the Dolphins. They're at home. They're favorites, just shy of a 50 point game total. But the piece that I like the most, you, you look at it off on the surface and you're like, wow, the Dolphins are pretty good against the pass. They rank third. And, you know, that is a little scary. But Kyler Murray can run. And the Dolphins' defense ranks dead last in rushing DVOA. This is going to be a monster day for Kyler Murray on the ground. If he can get a rushing touchdown, even better. Shows up in the optimal 9.7% of the time. Kyler Murray, number two for the week. Now you get an excellent pairing with DeAndre Hopkins. Who's number one? At number one. 10% of the time in the optimal, 7K, we're going to Josh Allen, projected for 24.6 fantasy points. This total is huge. It's possible the Bills are playing from behind against the Seahawks, and that should be a bit of a benefit because the Seahawks' pass defense ranks 30th. Not very good. A bad pass defense with a monstrous total. Quarterback likes to sling it. Does like the run too, which makes me a little nervous. I'm hoping that he can still pick up a little bit of rushing game, but I think Allen gets there with the pass. And if they have to play from behind, it's not ideal. Uh, I'm not in love with Allen as a quarterback, but if they're playing from behind, the fantasy points will be there. And that's all that matters to me. I don't care if Buffalo wins the game. I just want to know that Josh Allen has a big day and the blueprint is there. Mild underdog, big total, bad pass defense. 10% of the time in the optimal, Josh Allen, the number one quarterback this week. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my top five quarterbacks, running backs, wideouts, and tight ends on DraftKings for week nine in the NFL. One last time, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when this and everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to these sims as we get closer to lock. I'll definitely do an update sometime Saturday night, and I'll have one last, last update out Sunday morning before I go live on our strategy show and our NFL Live Before Lock. Best of luck this Sunday. I'm excited. I hope you are. I'll see you guys next Friday for Week 10's Top 5.